Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, an amazing reference book is actually an illustrated version of an encyclopedia, the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Science Fiction by John Clute, 1995. Let's take a closer look at this book. Publisher, Dorling Kindersley. Let's spend a little time here on the table of contents. Chapter 1, Future Visions. Graphic summaries of the future as seen in the past and the present. Chapter 2, Historical Context. Timelines, putting SF in historical context followed by analysis of one or more themes associated with that time. Chapter 3. Influential Magazines A gallery of the notable and influential magazines from SF's different eras. Chapter 4. Major Authors Timelines charting books, themes, and author debuts year by year, followed by profiles of authors prominent at the time. Chapter 5. Classic Titles. A selection of the enduring classics of each period, presented in first or early editions. Chapter 6. Graphic Works. A gallery of the major illustration trends, comics, and graphic novels. Chapter 7. Genre Film. Listings of the noteworthy films of each era, followed by an analysis of its concerns. And Chapter 8, International Television, The History of SF on the Small Screen, with listings and an analysis of trends. There's also a glossary, index, and acknowledgements. Future Visions We start with the 19th century, Mighty Machines, and then we go by decades. The 1900s, the 1910s, the 1920s, the 1930s, and 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 80s, and the 1990s. Historical Context We look at the beginnings of SF. So we start off with the century, 1800 to 1899, the Industrial Age. And we have SF events, film, radio and television, magazines, and world events. And the world events especially I find important for context in terms of when books were written and what was going on at that time. A couple articles about the 1800s, looking at lost worlds and evolution in SF. And then we get to decades in the 1900s. So 1900 to 1909, a glowing future. As you can see, we have each year in the decade. Then an article on future wars. Then we go to 1910 to 1919. Here's an interesting one down here. Three SF writers, John Jacob Astor, Jacques Futrell, and W.T. Steed go down on the Titanic. None of them had predicted the event. So we can see that John Clute sometimes has a little bit of dark humor in here as well.
The Darkening World. And then 1920 to 29, The Aftermath of the War. Very famous early science fiction movie, Metropolis. Science and Inventions. Robots, Androids, and Cyborgs. Nineteen thirty to nineteen thirty nine, the Depression Decade. Perhaps you know of Orson Welles' radio play of War of the World. People thought it was actually a news report if they tuned in late. We also have John W. Campbell starting his editor role in Astounding Magazine. The Satirical Edge, Charlie Chaplin. Time Travel. Alternate Worlds. 1940 to 1949, Global Conflict. Obviously, World War II plays a big role in context for those writers who went through the war and came out the other side. We also enter the nuclear age. Future histories. We have some examples from Stephen Baxter, Olaf Stapleton, Paul Anderson, Robert A. Heinlein, and Larry Niven. A couple future histories I'm interested in are also by Cord Wayner Smith and James H. Schmitz. 1950 to 1959, A Silver Age. After the Apocalypse. The catastrophes in 1950s SF really began in 1945. Many novels had been published depicting the fall of civilization before this date in the United States, in Europe, and elsewhere, but they had rarely specified very clearly just what it was that caused the collapse. If they ever did make things clear, they tended to seem pretty foolish. Sometimes it was socialism that stultified the course of world history and brought humanity back into a state of barbarism. Sometimes it was the vote for women. Sometimes it was a cosmic catastrophe like a change in the moon's orbit, scientifically loony, that crashes it into the ocean and makes waves. Only after 1945, after two atomic bombs had been dropped on Japan to bring an end to World War II, did SF writers have a real-life event available to them that was of an order of magnitude sufficient to justify a radical change in humanity's fortunes upon this planet. By the time 1950 came around, ending civilization was as easy as falling off a log. Nineteen sixty to nineteen sixty nine, fiction is fact. And we have a lot of history here about space travel and reaching the moon. Thinking machines, the computer age, and space flight. Nineteen seventy to nineteen seventy nine, looking inward. City life, other worlds, gender roles, nineteen eighty to nineteen eighty nine. New Beginnings. The Cyberpunk Years. They Come from Outer Space. Nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety four, Facing a New Century. Orbit publishes the one and a half million word encyclopedia of science fiction, edited by John Clute and Peter Nichols. 
weighing in impressively, it is a hugely expanded follow-up to the 1979 title. It wins Hugo, Locus, and Easton Grandmaster Awards, and a special award from the British Science Fiction Association. It also proves to be a quite unexpected success commercially. And, of course, it's the forerunner to this illustrated edition. The Red Planet Influential Magazines Chapter 3 so we look at the early pulps, the golden age, the post-war boom, contemporary publications, and of course this is contemporary up to 1994-95. Major authors. This chapter is going to be invaluable to me. If you are starting an SF collection of your own, you would do well to look at each one of these authors. Once again, we have a timeline. So we start with the century 1800 to 1899, the birth of the book. On this timeline, we have Notable works, icons, and debuts. If you wanted a list of major SF books, you could go through the timeline all these years and see the major publications. And then we look at the authors from that century, major authors. So we look at Mary Shelley, Lord Lytton, Edgar Allan Poe, Jules Verne, Jules Verne has two pages here, and in these pages we always have a bibliography. H.G. Wells, so in the bibliography here you can see his novels and novellas, short story collections, and selected nonfiction. Nineteen hundred to nineteen twenty four, the twentieth century genre, and is broken apart into five year stretches here. So we're talking about authors like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Hugo Gernsback, Yevgeny Samatian. Carol Capic. 1925 to 1949, SF is christened. With each table shown now, we're getting more and more major authors. Olaf Stapledon, E.E. E. Smith or Doc Smith, Aldous Huxley, George Orwell, John W. Campbell Jr., Maurice Renard, Murray Leinster, Jack Williamson, Henry Cutner and C. L. Moore or Catherine Moore, A. E. Van Vogt. Just want to note something here. A. E. Van Vogt is a Canadian. He's from my province. He lived for a long time in my city, Winnipeg. There's always a ghost at the feast. Van Vogt was born in Winnipeg. Actually, he was born south of Winnipeg in a very small rural community. He was born in Winnipeg, although, incomprehensibly, he seems to have not been invited to the World Science Fiction Convention held there in 1994 and lived in Canada almost until the end of World War II. Feels like a missed opportunity for Winnipeg and for me. Robert A. Heinlein, now we slow down to five-year stretches here, 
1950 to 1954, a bright new age. So now we go by years, the notable works, the icons, and the debuts. So for example, 1950 saw The Voyage of the Space Beagle by A.E. Van Vogt. The debut in 1954 of Brian W. Aldiss. 1955 to 1959, the established genre. 1959. And so these are the authors from that decade. Isaac Asimov. Hal Clement. L. Sprague de Camp. John Winham. This is an author that I'm a completist in gathering all his work. Eric Frank Russell, Arthur C. Clarke. I found this one interesting here, Obscure Origins. Ten-Story Fantasy was an undistinguished magazine with a lifespan of just one issue, but that issue included Sentinel of Eternity, which was the germ for 2001. And I like this autograph to Roger Little did I know, Arthur C. Clarke. Ray Bradbury, Fritz Leiber, Theodore Sturgeon, William Ten, Damon Knight, C. M. Cornbluth, Walter M. Miller, Jr., Philip Jose Farmer. Jack Vance. James Blish. Cordwainer Smith. Andre Norton. Gordon R. Dixon. Kurt Vonnegut. Paul Anderson. Robert Sheckley. Algis Budris. Nineteen sixty to nineteen sixty four on the cusp. There's Ari Lafferty himself and Larry Niven to close out those five years. And nineteen sixty five to nineteen sixty nine, the future is now. Michael Moorcock in nineteen sixty five. And you'll see a few covers here from the A Science Fiction Special Series One that I've covered on this channel. We have Joanna Russ's debut novel, Picnic in Paradise, The Jagged Orbit by John Brunner, more author biographies and bibliographies, Stanislaw Lem, Harry Harrison, Clifford D. Simek, Brian W. Aldiss, Primo Levi. Italo Calvino. Avram Davidson. R.A. Lafferty. Herbert Frank. Yes, Herbert Frank. Gerard Klein. Philip K. Dick. And then, yes... Here now we do have Frank Herbert, Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, Harlan Ellison, Michael Moorcock, Joanna Russ, and Larry Niven. A little note about Jerry Purnell, who partnered with Niven on many of his books. Roger Zelazny, Samuel R. Delaney, Kate Wilhelm, Marion Zimmer Bradley, John Brunner, Thomas M. Dish. I've talked about a lot of his books from the 1960s, including The Genocides. J.G. Ballard. 
This picture is from Steven Spielberg movie Empire of the Sun, based on his novel Empire of the Sun. It's a semi-autobiographical novel. 1970 to 1974, The Next Generation. We have the debut of Christopher Priest. 1975 to 1979, The Absorption of SF. 1980s. Major authors, Ursula K. Le Guin. When I look at her bibliography, I find her first decade of publications amazing. One of my favorite authors. James White. Ian Watson. Christopher Priest. Bob Shaw. Another favorite of mine. Slowly working through all of his novels. I find his work very entertaining. Barry N. Malsberg. Frederick Pohl. James Tiptree, Jr., who, of course, is Alice Sheldon. Robert Silverberg. Gene Wolfe. Philippe Caval. John Sladek. C.J. Cherry. Vonda N. McIntyre. Joe Haldeman, Octavia Butler, Michael Bishop, Anne McCaffrey, George R. R. Martin, John Crawley, John Varley, nineteen eighty to nineteen eighty four, a new age of SF. We have the debut of William Gibson. Nineteen eighty five to nineteen eighty nine, merging streams. Some major authors Greg Bear, Orson Scott Card. Werner Vinge, Joan D. Vinge, William Gibson. Recognize that cover. Ian Banks, Kim Stanley Robinson, Sherry S. Tepper, Julian May. David Brin, Bruce Sterling. James P. Blaylock, Tim Powers, Connie Willis, Michael Swanwick, Lucius Shepard, Lois McMaster Bougeau, Pat Cadigan, 1990-1994, Facing the Millennium. We see Stephen Baxter's debut, Raft. Dan Simmons, Stephen Baxter, Nancy Kress, Paul J. McCauley. Then we go into classic titles, key books published. From early science fiction, Classics of the Golden Age. I've talked a lot about Earth Abides. Classics of the 1950s. Another favorite of mine, Childhood's End. Also known as 
The star is my destination. And of course, Starship Troopers. Classics of the 1960s. Of course, we have Dune and the Left Hand of Darkness. I also talked about Rite of Passage by Alexi Panshin. Classics of the 1970s. Thomas M. Dish. The Forever War. Classics of the 1980s. I've talked about Ridley Walker. Neuromancer. Classics of the 1990s. I think it's a little tough to judge the classics of the 1990s since this was written in 1994 and published in 1995. I would have to say A Fire Upon the Deep definitely is a classic. Then we have graphic works. We take a look at great illustrators. Only a couple are highlighted here. And we look at American comics. European comics, Japanese comics, genre film. We have a listing of some early films, an article about visual trickery, films of the 1930s, Inventors and Adventurers, Films of the 1940s, A Decade of Stagnation. But then, of course, we came to the films of the 1950s. Outer Space Interfere. The films of the 1960s. Three pages worth. Toward the Stars. Films of the 1970s. Once again, three pages or three double pages so i guess six pages the bigger picture movies that changed everything especially star wars the films of the 1980s Once again, we have six pages on those. The new premises. And films of the 1990s, at least the first four years. Frankenstein Reborn. International Television. American television, defending the present, British television, irreverence and insurrection,
European and Japanese television. Then we have a glossary and an index. This index is very helpful when I'm looking up authors or information about certain novels. And finally, their acknowledgments. I think you would agree, this is a wonderful book and a wonderful resource. I like the visual quality to the timelines. I give this 10 out of 10. Highly, highly recommended. I think in building a vintage SF library, this book is amazing to show me lists, context, and authors that I should be collecting. I know I'll be grabbing that off the shelf quite often. Until next time, keep reading. And remember, look for the context.